Hey everybody, welcome back to Touchy Reactions, fans of Wrexham AFC. We are back with another one. This is episode nine of season two called Glove Triangle. I got my awesome sister Danielle here with me and we're not gonna waste time. We're jumping right into it. Here we go. I'm curious what Glove Triangle is. I have no idea. Uh, the only player that wears gloves is the goalie. goalie. So it makes me wonder if uh, there's maybe a, co a competition between the goalies now that the other guy's back trying to see who's who. Hmm. My guess, my guess. <laughs> That's it, good touch. That's what we're looking for, yeah? They're buzzing to be back in the side. But I've been training then for the last six to eight weeks, and I was just come back from the hand injury. Finally got back to where I wanted to be. Rob, he was our number one. You can't lose your job to injury. Mark stepped up, and he's gotten us through this entire season. Through the entire season. I mean, Mark has only lost two games. And then Rob was healthy, so Rob came back in. It was a strange time, really, because everyone wants to play. John played, what, 34 games at the top of the league. He's not done much wrong. And a strong hand by Mark Howard. Go! Hey. Leno is a really good shot stopper. Obviously, I've only seen him play five or six times this season, but in training, the saves that he does make is it really good. When Rob did get back in the team, I've not been one to, to moan or argue or complain about those sort of situations. We've all got our own uh, capabilities and strengths and weaknesses. I'm not here to complain against it. I'm not here to fight against him. I'm here to support him and help him. Welcome to beautiful Hayes Lane, where 10th place Bromley will host the league leaders, Wrexham. And the gaffer put me on the sticks. Obviously, Chomp is on the bench. It just is what it is. Listen. Don't you love that we understand all that? <laughs> yeah. The gaffer put me between the sticks and chomps on the bench. Yeah, we know all that. We, that all, we, we speak this up. is so English. Right, that rock garden out there? Oh, so good. With all the gravel pots. driveways. The pots with the plants in them. Yeah. They bounce past the football one. Uh, you could be... Welsh, you mean, yeah. <laughs> British. They get mad in the comment section when we say English. Sorry, British. Yeah. Pit one week, not pit the next. And it's into the arms there of, uh, of Layton. And I just wanted to comment, actually, Rob Layton hasn't had that much luck at Hayes Lane. No, uh, during the COVID season, um, he suffered an injury in a collision with James Alarby. It's all round the corner, looking for the run of James Alarby. It's going to get there. A massive collision. No, Rob not. Layton is down and not moving. He was down for approximately half an hour. He was taken to hospital and thankfully he was all right. And then uh, last season, Brexham returned for that 0-0 draw and... Uh, he went down again and got another injury that day and had to be treated. It's like you can feel it when oh, it happens, right? Oh, that really looked like it hurt. And especially since we know what happened. He like dislocated his wrist. Or yeah. Mm. Every single game. He'll certainly want a less eventful match than uh, his past couple yeah. of visits, Rob Layton. To the game. Was going fine. I'd not had nothing oh, to do. No. I don't think they had a shot on target, really, to be honest. Here's Layton. Kendall closing him down, and Layton hasn't get rid of it. He manages to find Palmer. And then 43 minutes has gone, and I kick a ball. I, I just kind of like, I just felt something weird, like just. Oh, man. My knee. I'm jogging across, I'm thinking something's not right here. The half time whistle blows. The score this first half as the team is head back to the changing room. I was hoping it wasn't too bad. So we checked and he was like, no, you've got to come off. I was like, no chance. You would think that he'd be extra careful right now coming back. I don't think you can be careful when you're a goalie. You've got to put your whole body into that because you only have one job. You no, know, what I mean, though, is you would think he'd be like, no, put the other guy in. I don't want to get another real bad injury that's going to have me out for a long time. I, I don't, I don't want to make something small into something big. Well, see, and I would think it's the opposite. He's been out for so, since 2022. Now we're into 2023. He's been out for at least six months and you or know, his, more. His biggest fear has been I'm going to lose my position to this other guy because he's doing so well. And, so, I mean, they probably love – Playing football, yeah. so that probably he couldn't probably was chomping at the bit to get back yeah. there. Chomp. Yeah. For fuck's sake, I've come from where I've come from, and then I got myself back in the team, and now I'm just 
done this. You right, Rob? MCL. He's on his MCL. No! On that last kick. I think he can continue. 18th of March 2022, I did my wrist. And then the 18th of March 2023, I fucking did my MCL. Mental. All right. Go tell Trump he's coming on, please. Was that meniscus? Uh, it's meniscus. I, I don't know what the M stands for, but the C is the crucial ligament. It's the one of the ligaments in the so middle like of the knee. Maybe it's major or something like that. Yeah, the ligaments that all connect your upper and lower leg to your kneecap. There's Man. ACL and MCL. They're both one's anterior, anterior crucial ligament and uh, the other one. <laughs> and by the way, he'd be good in the calendar too. Yeah, handsome. Yeah. It's so hard sometimes, because you want to play. You do want to play. I don't wish injury upon anybody. I've had some really bad injuries in my past, so Leno's obviously had his fair share of them, and it, he's been very unlucky. Three times in three seasons at that ground is just... It's horrendous. Uh, mentally, it must be really tough for him. Yeah. Fucking Bromley. Yeah. I sat, what, six months on the sidelines watching at the start. Contribute a little bit in those six games, and then had to watch again. Oh, back on the way, Wrexham making a change at the break at half time, and uh, Rob Layton coming off. We talked about his bad luck at Hayes Lane in the first half. Well, that bad luck has carried on. Oh, Bromley. Three seasons in a row, and Layton's picked up an injury at Bromley. It's incredible. It's awful. And that's the final whistle. Wrexham victors today. I really hope for Rob it's not too bad. Um, he's had some bad luck at this ground. It's like he's cursed. Equally. Almost to the point where if he ever comes back here like, healthy. Hi, you go ahead and yeah, do if this If he ever game. comes back here healthy, he'd be like, hey, man, you feel like playing tonight? Yeah, because <laughs> I'm going to sit this one out. Yeah, I'm, I'm just not even going to risk it. I mean, seriously, that's like, what a winky dink. Yeah, right, right, right. Delighted for Mark to, to come on and, and, and show a real calm assurance. It's never easy coming off the bench in any position, but particularly a keeper. But I thought, you know, he just came on and gave us a nice air of calmness and, and helped us get over the line. Wrexham close it out. With Bob's County drawing the farthest, Wrexham now nice. some breathing space at the top oh, wow. of the table. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget why you made up. Don't forget to sing when you win. Don't forget to sing when you win. That one lady looked like Nanny at the beginning. I know. <laughs> Word is that Rob Layton will be out for the rest of the season. Are you comfortable Damn. with Howard in goal again? You know, he's done enough over the course of you know, the season as a whole. He's kept, what, 13 clean sheets this year. He stopped us from getting a pump in at Notts County in the season with four or five decent saves. What a class act Mark Howard is. You know what a clean sheet is? Uh, no goals? Yeah, they shut out shut their him opponents. Out. So he had 13 clean sheets. That's good. Ball of Howard in goal again. You know, he's done enough over the course of, you know, the season as a whole. He's kept, what, 13 clean sheets this year. He stopped us from getting a pump in at Notts County in the season with four or five decent saves. What a class act Mark Howard is. <clears throat> he has been fantastic for us. Awesome. He's a fantastic goalkeeper. He's, he's a good goalkeeper. He's got a fantastic... shot stop. He's brilliant. He's, he's, he's... Is this the podcast now? Oh, yeah. The Wrexham podcast? He's had a very, very good career. I think Mark Howard's... 37, 38, so he's obviously getting no younger, but I, I think he's been a really good signing and a really experienced head. Beautiful. Mum, we're just going to put the telly on. That's, That's fine. okay. I'll see you after that. We can go out in the garden, right? Uh, yeah. So we've got a plate for your cookies, you plonkers. Well, we've got a table. Who cares about plates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just know that Mummy and Daddy will clean up after you, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> uh, Mark Howard, goalkeeper. I turned pro at 18, I'm 36, nearly 37 now, so close to 18, 19 years. It's hard because of his age, you think you're kind of coming to the end of your career. It was weird. It felt like Wrexham was just a really good fit. Me and Lucy uh, travelled around a lot, like with different football clubs and stuff, so she's been unbelievably supportive of my whole career. And we've been blessed with two beautiful children, and I feel very fortunate. So, hey. Mark, he's, he's brilliant. He just uh, switches off from work to family man when he gets home. Nice spots. There's a lot that surrounds going on at football and the expectancy level, like I said, but just coming home and just being a normal person, being dad, is like the thing that makes me happiest. No days off, extra training, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, it's one nil. Mark, careful of his face. <laughs> well, so Mark Howard. <laughs> I knew that was Get coming. I knew thing. it was coming. Mark, have you been training her? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Yours Mine Away podcast with me, Mark Howard. Uh, I can't believe I'm actually saying this today. Uh, I've got one of my idols in, uh, one of the reasons that I play in goal and still uh, carry on to this day. Uh, he's played over 1,000 professional games. Actually sounds crazy to say <laughs> that. Please welcome Big David Seaman. Pleasure, mate. Arsenal and England goal. Nice. He must be good if he was an England goal goalkeeper. Yeah. And how did how'd they get him on their <laughs> podcast? This sounds like a podcast that's all about goalkeeping and stuff, so maybe that's... Uh, oh, okay. At least that's, I would imagine, what it's about, being him being a goalkeeper. I wonder if he was a goalie for when Beckham was on the England team. Uh, he might be the right age. He looks like he might be a little older than David. Eh, maybe not. They might, they might have crossed paths. The podcast only started about when I started my uni degree. I'm studying uh, journalism and media. Uh, I'm at that stage of my career where I am looking to what happens next, to make sure I've got everything in place for life after football. I've looked up to you for years. <laughs> I know, and, it, and it's weird, isn't it? You know, like, as, you know, because you were like, what were you, about 14? 14, 15, yeah. yeah. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I can't wait to get to that level. <laughs> I still never have. <laughs> Aerial power in there for the Blades. The cat, they find a cutting edge. Sober, Chris Kisano, off the line. Somehow kept out by Seaman. That is a fantastic save. But you brought in that glove uh, no. that made that yeah. save. That's the best yeah. ever save I've ever seen. For the ball to change direction it? so it, many times. Yeah, it was it was a different save. It weren't like a hard shot and then a de little deflection. Yeah. These belong in a museum, mate. <laughs> They've been worth <laughs> yeah, a lot no, of money, these, no, by the no, way. Yeah, true. Dave Seaman had a huge influence on me because coming through at Arsenal, he was always the number one until I went full time. But I was lucky enough to train with him a few times and see what he was all about. And yeah. I think he's played over 75 times for England. He, he wow. was at the pinnacle of his game for a long, long time. How big are they? Yeah, but we used to tuck them in, though, didn't we? Yeah. Big baggy sleeves. Yeah. Do you have yours out now? No, I, I like literally pull a cuff up and that's it. Yeah, but do you tuck oh, it in untucked, your shirt? Untucked, yeah. Untucked, yeah. yeah. Hide me belly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that mentally I'm still 100% there. I, I want to get to 40. I've got that in my head that I know I've got more to offer on the field. I love what I do. I look forward to being re-given that opportunity to keep keep my place, and I just want us to do well. Um, and I, I want us to get promoted. I want to be part of that journey. So, obviously, at the end of last season, we suffered an injury to Rob Lainton, which left us without kind of adequate goalkeeping cover. Um, and, you know, I think some of the challenges we endured in that final game of the season could be linked to injuries, both to goalkeepers and central defenders. So we're very sensitive to uh, ensuring we had good quality injury cover this year. So when Rob went down again, much as Mark had done a brilliant job, we wanted to ensure that we had someone in there to provide competition to him. The breaking news is that Ben Foster has come out of retirement just before his 40th birthday and he's going to be playing for National League leaders Wrexham. So they what? got another 40 year old. <laughs> I mean, they got a guy older than the guy they got now to be their backup. But he must be, he must be, all that says Premier League behind yeah, him. Looks like Watford Football Club. Wow. 
They've confirmed they're going to be signing him until the end of the season. Now, he returns here, having uh, spent time there on loan from his parent club, Stoke, uh, 18 years ago. So there you have it, Ben Foster coming out of retirement and going to be playing uh, for Wrexham. Ben Foster is an unusual character to see turning out for a National League football club. He's got 500 career appearances, 400 in the Premier League. He played for England. He's played for wow. Manchester United. He's played for Watford. He has played almost his entire career at the absolute top of the game. Well, that was Ronaldo right there. That means he's been... And if he's 40, he's well, Beckham's 50-something. Yeah, Beckham is almost my age. He's like two, two years younger than me. You can tell by the way we look the same, me and David Beckham. Oh, like, yeah, twins. Just twins. <laughs> People ask me all the time, are you David Beckham? I'm like, no, I get that. <laughs> get that all the time. American friends call me, they're like, oh, uh, who's Ben Foster? Uh, we don't know much about soccer. I said, well, that's very simple. It's like signing the Tom Brady. <laughs> yep. right, I feel a little better now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Didn't realize that's what we were talking about. That was a very good analogy. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Every once in a while, uh, over the course of a season or a career, there are those people out there that get that extra little bit of magic. The Kobe Bryants of the world, the Michael Jordans of the world, um, the Tom Brady's of the world. Ben Foster. He is that player. Ben Foster, premiership goalkeeper his entire yeah. life. You know, just, you know, he's brilliant. Howard's still a good job for us. He's not perfect, but who is? Well, he, he knows that bringing Ben Foster in means he probably doesn't play another game this season. Goalkeeper's the hardest position on the field. You can, you can make 10 saves, you make one mistake, you're the villain. Yeah. The thing I think That's what I broke said. our hearts is that Mark Howard has stepped up for this team over and over and over again all season with clean sheets galore and putting his heart, his body, his spirit on the line. Mark has only lost two games, but we bring in a another keeper who by all measure and all regard, and Mark would admit this as well, is the superior keeper. And that's just the reality of, of the sport. I feel like uh, that's Robin- That's terrible though. I feel like Rob and Ryan were getting close to the end of the season. They were like, you know, we should we do need rather than, let's not take any chances. It's a long season. Let's bring in some insurance. Yeah, to, uh, that's kind of a shitty thing to do to that guy who's been there all season. And he hasn't done a bad job. They're no, in first place. No. I would understand if uh, the other guy came in as a backup. Right. So giving him the starting role, I, I don't know. You almost got to ask the guy, you know, what do you think? Right. Who needs to be starting here, you or him, you know? I don't know. I felt for Mark. Right. Just being part of the team, just right at the top of the league, and mm -hmm. it's done well for us. Um, when you get a chance to sign a kid for Ben Foster's, Quality, um, you know, you've got to take that, and uh, you know, it's always tough on somebody else. That's what's best for the team. At this, I think, I think Mark knows that. We know that. Obviously, Phil knows that because he's making that decision. The manager phoned me on the Wednesday night before Ben signed, and I was oh. just about to walk into my daughter's school play. So, the manager sent me a text saying, "Can you call me quickly?" To be fair, I understood his decision. At first, you think, "Oh no, this don't look great for me," but it looks good for the club. I said, if it makes us better, we'll, we'll, we're all in it together. And uh, I, I went, obviously, I had to hang up and go and watch my daughter's school play. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a great attitude to have, but those are just words. There's no way he wasn't crushed thinking, thinking about that the entire time he was watching that school. And play. there's no way he, he wasn't cr his pride. That's a kick to his pride. That's a kick to his whatever those you athletes yeah. have where they, I mean, that whole, that's got to be crushing. Now, obviously, he knows who the other guy is. Of he course. Knows. So he knows the situation he's in. But, yeah, I don't think he enjoyed that recital as much as he would have if they'd have called yeah. him later. And, again, he's saying all the right words. Yeah, it's we're a team. What's, best for, what's the team. best for the team. I'm all about the team. But uh, when he goes home, I bet she's going to cry when he gets in the car. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Ben Foster, retired Premier League player. He said, I jump in, let's go. I'll, I'll get you guys across the line. Morning all. Morning, morning. You all right? You all right? That's confidence right there. And he's calendar worthy. <laughs> yeah, confidence. He just said, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll help you guys if you do this. Let's do it. Morning, morning. morning, morning.
I really enjoyed retirement. I started playing an awful lot of golf. Really, really enjoying doing all the things that I've never been able to do for the last 20 years of my life. And then Wrexham came knocking and um, it... <laughs> They were the team that basically gave me my opportunity to to play first team football, and that's basically where my career just lifted off from there. So initially, wow, full circle. So he uh, started playing for Wrexham. He was and then playing, worked his way up. He borrowed. He was borrowed from another team back when he was a minor leaguer to come play for Wrexham when they needed some help. So they gave him kind of his break and nice. helped kickstart his career. And now at the end, he's coming back to almost to return the favor kind of thing. That's kind of a storybook, man, storybook. I, I, I wish they'd have had <coughs> uh, some cameras on our regulars from around town when they found out this guy was coming to For town. their reaction. Like, oh, hey, everybody, Tom Brady's coming to town. Right. <laughs> Joining the team. What? They owe a lot to, to Wrexham for what they've given me. So I'll take it to your yeah. To bring Fozzie in. It was a case of having an insurance policy. I mean, you bring in a top goalkeeper as well. I know he hadn't played for a period of time, but he's got a pedigree. I'll be honest, I was thinking it'd have to be something pretty pretty spectacular yeah. or unique to get you out of retirement because you've had, we spoke about Newcastle, yeah. and that was an incredible offer. Yeah. Obviously, you've got to expect that being non-league, it's not going to be anywhere near kind of like Premier League money or anything no, like no. that. And to be perfectly honest yeah, I, I don't really need much anyway. So the negotiations quite honestly took about five minutes, didn't they? Yeah, it was, it was, the, it was the easiest conversation in the world. Ben Foster turns down Newcastle and weeks later signs for Wrexham. Tells you all you need to know, silly money. So they must think they're, they're paying him a fortune. Well, yeah, everybody thinks that uh, Ryan and Rob are just opening the floodgates. The internet went nuts with, you know, Ryan and Rob splash out millions of dollars to bring in Premier League goalie for the end of the season. And I bet you that's not even true. The problem is they have bought the title, whether it's buying players from League One startups, lineups, their manager, or the latest one, Ben Foster. Ben Foster wouldn't rock up against... Alchingham? I'm going to go Altrincham. No, it's Altrincham. For EG. I don't know what that means. Uh, National League Sands 1 or 2 is usually fair play and money shouldn't come into it. I mean, I get it. I get it. If people are uh, in that same league, like this could be a Knotts County fan yeah. that, that was hoping they had a shot back and they're like, oh man, we just don't have the money to keep up with this team. And what I will always love. And I will always be indebted to Ben Foster for is the fact that he immediately went on his own <laughs> podcast and said, the negotiations for this deal lasted five minutes. I'm being paid peanuts. It's literally peanuts. I, I don't want much. I don't. I'm coming back to just get this club into the next league. That's it. I don't need any glitz or glamour. I don't need all the nice, shiny, sparkly bits. I said, the part of it for me is to try and help the team, get them over the line, get promoted and that's what it is is it's seeing Wrexham back in the football league stick me in a corner with the goalies or something there's, another goalie corner would be lovely there's goal. one there that just lost his head he was that's... the first one I saw when we got here as well he was getting out of the car thinking oh, oh don't like this <laughs> don't like it if anybody deserved to be given another chance to just finish out the season and help Wrexham get over the line, it would have been Chom gutted for him at that moment in time because, like you say, he had such a big part to play in this season. Right. Um, he had done fantastically well. I think goalkeepers are much better at dealing with this situation than what outfield players are. I think outfield players tend to... I think egos get in the way a little bit. Whereas goalies, we understand that there's only one player that can play in that position. Only one goalie can be picked. I explained to him how, um, how, I, how I came about signing, basically, how it all happened. I said, listen, I'll be honest with you, John, I've come here to play. You know, that's what it is. I've, I've told the manager that I'm playing and I'm not coming here to be a number two. And he said, he, he, he's again, he's, he's super honest, Chomp. And he's like, yeah, I understand that, mate. You know, you were playing in the Premier League last year. You're not going to want to come here and be a number two. And I was like, listen, I'm, I'm not, 
you know, I'm not being a big head or an eat. I, I feel like I can do this. You know, I want to do this. I want to do it properly as well. I'm not coming here just to, you know, gain a few Instagram followers or whatever. I, I, I want to do it properly. Um, and I think he could see that, to be fair. That's a fucking test at the start with. Ben's someone that I've followed a lot of my career. Uh, because he's a few years older than me, someone that I've looked up to and what he's gone on to achieve from playing for England and playing for Man United in the Champions League and he's had numerous promotions. Ben's standards that he's put in that 18 year period are incredible, along with what he's done in the game off the field. Hello everybody, I'm Ben Foster, the Psycho GK. It's Friday, yeah, Saturday, Sunday, <laughs> right. He's got a YouTube channel. I mean, lots of people have got YouTube channels around here, but his is good. What have you done? Competition. <laughs> <laughs> I was just getting ready to start a cycling goalkeeping channel, and I can't do it. It's on Big Fat. Ah, it's it on there. Yeah. This hotel is bloody lovely. Look at this. People want to see that, don't they? They want to see a bit more behind the scenes. Like, like robots, you know? Yeah, I know, exactly. How cool is that? I think he's, he's the first person that ever made it popular to show interest in YouTube and podcasts and the GoPro and everything like that. He was the first person that did it. Just about to do the Yours Mine Away podcast, Supermark. Oh my gosh, he's got his replacement on his podcast. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, he can't say no, right? Right. <laughs> Howard wasted no time in getting me, tapping me right up for the podcast real quick. <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is probably going to be the most listened to podcast of this guy's career. Even though he just had that one other guy on there. Yeah, this one might beat it. The fact that I'm bringing on the guy that's uh, coming in to take me, my job. Replacing me, essentially. Hello, everyone. Today we've got an unbelievable guest, my current teammate. Just nick my place. Thanks a lot for that, mate. I'm going to get straight to that. Uh, please welcome Ben Foster. Oh, mate, don't. I feel bad now. <laughs> I had to break the ice with that. I had no, to, no, mate. No. No. Uh, no, thanks for having me, man. I'm looking forward to this. At first, everyone thought, oh, Mark would be so pissed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, proper pissed. And then, obviously, after like you coming in, I was like, if it gets us through, like, through that door, mate, and we get promoted, let's just mate, enjoy that, that so moment. so proper, that is, honestly. That's, that is so that is proper. What, Goalkeeping is about, yeah. though, isn't it? Like, obviously, you, you've been in teams before, been out of teams, and that's what we are like. Exactly. Do you know it's what not I mean? what my missus said, by the way, when I told her. <laughs> she went, what? How's the first few days at Wrexham be? Really good, mate. Buzzed off it. Absolutely buzzed off it. You saw me in training on Thursday. <laughs> Don't lie, right? Don't lie. Give your honest assessment of what I look like training on Thursday. Uh, rusty. Did I look like a goalie who'd been retired for 10 months? Uh, the first few volleys. I thought you were going to say ten years. Then, yeah. <laughs> the first few volleys, I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's not what I remember him. And as soon as you got in the games, you just turn on again. Good to go again. Yeah, yeah. it was mental. I hope, I hope I'm feeling good tomorrow. I was nervous. Huh. I was really, really nervous. Like I say, I hadn't played for a while. There's going to be a lot of eyes on me. You know, if I make a mistake in the first few yeah. minutes, it's going to be like, oh, what have we done? This is a circus. Do you know what I mean? You're signing a 40-year-old goalie that's miles off it. Yeah, he better not allow. He better have a clean sheet in that first game. I have this thing about these pro athletes. They eat, sleep, breathe, whatever it is, whatever sport it is they play. Yeah. And eventually that becomes muscle memory. Yeah. That becomes routine, like we were talking about. It becomes a part. It's almost like it in their DNA now. There is, for him, I'm sure all it took was a few warm-ups for him, like he said, to be back in the game. I think about uh, the show Ted Lasso, Roy Kent. Yeah. He still had the mind of a, of a footballer. top athlete, but his body right. just wasn't there. And I, you know, that's what they must be fearing the most. God, I loved Roy. Yeah, Roy's the best. Whistle! <laughs> <laughs> Whistle! Yeah, whistle! <laughs> He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Hello, mate. Ben Foster. Oh, yes, I recognise you from about 15 years ago when we went to Big South End 2 more. 18 years ago. Was it 18? I was there. <laughs> Okay, Cheers, mate. Thank you. Welcome back to Oh, that's really lovely. Thank you very much. Of course you can. Thank you. 
let's turn our attention to today. Wrexham against York City. With two changes for Wrexham. It goes one. Ben Foster <laughs> makes his return to the race course. He'll be in goal for us. That's uh, a strange old world. <laughs> it's time for Foster Mania. Well, he's on for the lucky clean sheet. Well, he has to, doesn't he? That's what right. he's here for. Let's hope he's got nothing to do. It's Bryson playing. Yeah. I am. I really am. Uh, just because he hasn't, you must have had two good days training. Because if you've not really been been at it for nine months, how how easy is it yeah. to come back in? How much sharp are you? I don't know. I don't know. Good to be back, Foz. Good to be back. Again, it's in the DNA. Yeah, and at least he didn't spend his off time sitting on the couch playing an Xbox. He's no, been out yeah. riding bikes and hiking. Right, he stayed healthy, staying fit. Um, probably like. All the soreness and injuries that he probably had from playing have all healed up, and all that. Although he did forget his shin pads, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's a little nervous too. A little but nervous. I Which just don't great. think those caliber athletes ever forget. He's like, got, I, he's got to be so scared that he's going to come out here and do something bad. I mean, it's big pressure. Yeah, it's big pressure. But I mean, he's played for England. He he knows what pressure is. Yeah. So yeah. Got my shin pads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to, mate. I totally forgot you needed shin pads. Not the biggest. Oh, they're golden, mate. <laughs> hey, the boys are in town. Damn it, that means they're gonna lose because Rob's no, there. No, no, not anymore. That jinx is behind us. Because I'm gonna smell, wasn't it? Smell? Yeah, <laughs> work like dogs, all right? Come on, boys, hey, point to no disappointments. Best team in the league, we're the best team in the league, but you still gotta outwork everyone. Here come the team by Walsh, just for me. That I'm in a loud environment, as well, listen to this. <laughs> it's back to get loud. <laughs> it meant a bit to me, do you know what I mean? It was like I was coming home again almost. But I couldn't help um, in the hours leading up to the game just thinking about it, thinking, you know, there's going to be a lot of eyes, there's going to be a lot of focus. Plays it backwards, driven long for the halfway line. John Lewis driving into Toza, brings it down well and feeds it inside to Angos, the man outside. He plays it, Mendy can't make the interception, Fallowfield drives it in. That's all he needed. One good save, now he's ready. There, as most teams in this league are very good at just putting balls into the box. And the, the diagonal for John Lewis, who backs in well. John Lewis, oh, right. Shelton, good save. save by Foster. Oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> That's why we spend all those peanuts. That's a long <laughs> man. <laughs> first couple minutes they they got balls in the box relentlessly for a goalie it's a nightmare and across the flex off the defender and foster wow. takes it comfortably under his bar bit of backspin on it but he took it well foster that's a great throw finds lee surging forward he's got two strikers ahead of him as a goalie that's like oh that's the dream start come and take a cross bowl it out it's like yeah here we go we're cooking now great confidence experience from ben foster at the back there collecting the ball Great throw out and a good break. Not only for me, but I think for the lads in front of me, my back four, my defenders, they see a goalie that's willing to come off his line. And a confident goalie, proactive goalie, they think, yeah, this is nice, this is, we've got, we've got a good goalie behind us. So I think it just settled everybody, settled everything. Nice. Yeah. Some build up nicely, Lee now, left the edge, left side, cuts inside, beats his man, squares it, Cannon, helps her on first time, German shot! Oh. Oh. Is it going in? Yeah! Has it gone in? I think it has! It's given! Yeah! It's given! It's given! It's given! It's given! It's given! It's given! Moses delivery comes in at pace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that was the first time I got to see us play proper football and I'm watching it thinking this is this is so far above non-league, it's ridiculous. Like we are so much better than non-league. Foster no. launches it long. It's helped on by Dolby and Lee on a one. Can he wrap it up? Yes! Yeah! Three yeah. nil. Nice. They get the win. They got a clean sheet. That's how, supposed to be. That's how that goalie was dreamed that would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. We've seen Mullins celebration. We've seen Ben Foster enjoying the applause of the Wrexham fans. These lads are classy, you know. Look at this. Oh, yeah. One step closer. Booyah! Get in there, winning start, love that. Ben Foster, then, go on. Amazing, Nando, what amazing, man. Amazing, man. He's the man. That's what we need till the end of the season. Yeah. Solid, solid Rock solid, Ben Foster, come on! Yeah. Absolutely brilliant play, brilliant play, but I felt that he was playing with love, and it was really nice to see. You've come for eight games. That's one down now. A perfect start. Yeah. Another seven of them, and we'd be. Uh, oh, we're cooking. <laughs> yeah. We just need to keep it going. We just need to keep it going. It's as simple as that. And it's nice though, because like I said, I started my career here, and then I'm going to finish my career here, and that's the. It's like the full circle of a football. Like it's. Yeah. It's very, very nice. Well, nice. That, well, that could be me, or could it be? Oh, me, don't me get, let's not get carried away. <laughs> let's not get carried away. Bloody hell! Let's get these uh, next seven games out of the way. When he came in Thursday in training, he was excellent and he was uh, very confident he'd be fine to play, and he certainly showed it. I felt really good to be fair. I was nervous. Yeah. Like, I was, I, I say, I played every five of the games, but I was still nervous. Genuinely still nervous. Yeah, good to see you. Great to see you. I love that he's, he's played in the World Cup. He's played for England. You know what I mean? He's played for Manchester United, and he was still nervous to come play for Wrexham. You always have that little bit of doubt. Do I still of have Of course. That's the pressure, right? Yeah. And uh, he gets to once again feel that euphoria of winning a match. And even, even and even... winning that's going to just make him make his confidence even higher. Absolutely. <laughs> I love this. I love how much it means to you. Like, oh, my God. Please. It's class, yeah. isn't it? It's incredible. That's 10,000 fans there today, you know. No, there's no country in the world that would have a non-league stadium have 10,000 fans on it. It's bonkers. Yeah. Rob, uh, Ryan, they're both just buzzing, like absolutely buzzing. Um, we're so thankful, we're so happy, like, thank you for joining us, thank you for helping us, it means so much to us, you know, we're going to get over the line and we're, we're going to have a wicked time in Vegas when we've won the league. And <laughs> nice. <laughs> and as soon as they said that, we're, we're going to Vegas, we're going to go to Vegas. And they were like, yeah, well, of course we're going to Vegas. And I was like, oh, you're the boys. <laughs> what a start to life at Wrexham FC. 3-0, the boys were on absolute fire. And as always, you know I like to look out, out for you lot. We've got a giveaway, and I've got a friend to tell you what you need to do. If you want to win this, this Foster shirt, which smells exactly like victory <laughs> and some other stuff, you know what to do, right? <laughs> as always, give this video a like, subscribe, and then get in the comments and say to Matt Nice, it's as simple as that. All the best. See you soon. Oh my God. I love that. Like it. I love it. Oh, it's good when we're winning, boys. It's good when we're winning. I still get nervous, though. Yeah, I still want a 15 point lead going into the end of the season. They haven't showed us the table in a minute with the, with the scores. Well, they said knots had tied. Which gave them a little cushion. Yeah, so they're probably by three, six. They're probably by seven at least. All right, come on in, big dog. Let's go. <laughs> he was brilliant at Saturday, that was yeah, it. Yeah, it's all right. I've enjoyed it to be fair. Like I say everybody's been dead nice and God's sake, this is a bad game this. <laughs> That's unlucky that you know. Don't ever get too high, yeah? Don't ever get too low. It's a simple try and stay somewhere in that middle bit. If you can stay there, you won't go far wrong. The lads are from levels higher, aren't they? Much higher, mate. Yeah. Much higher. I'd say a league one level. Yeah, that's what I always picture as yeah. like we've got a League One team For playing sure. non league, but it's still no guarantees in that. No chance, mate. The levels that we've performed at and the results that we've got, the standards that we've got as a team, we deserve it, but whether we'll get it or not is a di different thing. If I miss this, I'll be heartbroken, by the way. Nearly rolled off that dead. No, I <laughs> <laughs> Nearly rolled off. <laughs> <laughs>
I like that they're uh, the goalies are all kind of like part of a little fraternity. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? And even though they both play for the same position, they both support each other, they're friends. And it's probably, even though he did come in and take his spot, it's got to be kind of cool for him to have this star from the Premier League here. Well, at least ha- if you're going to lose your spot, you're going to lose it to somebody who was in the Premier League. Yeah, you know what I mean? And, you know, there was, it's probably cool for him for several reasons. He gets to learn from him. There's right. probably some, you know, uh, he can probably teach him some stuff that maybe to make him a better uh, keeper. That's his homeboy now. Yeah. he can. He's got, he's got a friend who's a star, who's a famous guy, you know. I wonder if he's on that poster. It's not all downside. That looks like him right there. In the dark shirt right above yeah. the Wrexham Legends. We've got to do it this year. We've got to, we've got to, we've, we've got to have a bit of luck, surely. <laughs> <You know? laughs> the clever thing about Parky is he's built a team more for probably mid-table League One. Yeah, we get, we get League One crowds. I think if we go up, We'll I, 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 think we, I think we go straight up again. Yeah. I think we go straight up again. Through it all, flipping Notts County haven't lost a step. They're still with us. Well, the battle with Notts County has oh been my absolutely God. remarkable, wow. hasn't it? Two unbelievable football sides. They're a very, very good side, Notts County. Very good football, v- yeah. Very. It's almost disappointing that Notts doesn't also get promoted. They deserve it, the way right. they've been playing. And how do they decide that who's number two? Uh, do they play each other at the end of the season? I don't know, but they got Knott's first and Wrexham in second, and they had the same amount of points. Whoever gets promoted, the team in second place deserves to also go. And I think in the higher leagues, you actually, the top two or two, maybe three teams go up. I don't know how. But I, it's more than one. I think at least two. Well, they play a league game too, right? Just somebody has to win the league. Yeah. But I think you can get promoted just based on your uh, points. points. Yeah. Good, yeah. All five leagues, no one has ever earned 107 points. I mean, Notts County can go up with 109 points. Would you look at who's up next? It's all been leading up to this, with the season nearing the final hurdle. Oh it's my the God. big one. Yeah. Surely it's done. Surely it's done. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And if we don't do it this time, then we may as well pack up and go home, really, in it, you know? Did I read that right? They play Notts County for their last game of the season? Looks I like mean, it. that's that's perfect, right? Right. All right, well, that... Well, next week's going to be real exciting. That was a rapid end to that episode. Crazy. All right, so this whole episode was called Glove Triangle. We're talking about the And three, you were right, by the way. You guessed it. Yeah, the yep. three goalies. And uh, I was at the beginning of the episode, I was like, I don't know who the third goalie is. We only ever seen right. two of them. But uh, I love the new addition, of course, as fans of Wrexham who want to see them get promoted. We want to see them have the best weapons going out on the field. And I love his story. Just, I mean, to start at Wrexham and come back. Yeah. I mean... And him saying, you know, I don't even care about the money. I just want to help him go up. And when they go up, the other keeper goes up with him. Right. And if he retires again, he's still going to be the keeper right. of the team. So it's it's beneficial to him as well that they all get. And you start getting paid when you're in that next league, right? You start getting that good money. Yeah. So uh, it's good for it's good for everybody that they win these last games. All right. So that was an excellent episode. Yeah, this was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it out there. I hope you enjoyed our reaction. If you did, hit that like button down below. It doesn't cost you anything. It makes us feel good when people like our videos. Thank you very much. Please like us. Yes, like us. <laughs> it's all we live for. We YouTubers live for likes and subscribes. If you haven't subscribed yet, there's a big red button down below. Click on that. It'll turn gray, let you know you have subscribed. And you hit that bell off to the side. It'll let you know anytime we drop new content over here at Touchy Reactions. We also have a Patreon. There's a link up in the corner and down below in the description, along with all the social media accounts as well. So come follow us over there. Daniel, thank you for joining me. This was fun. This was a good one. Now we got to wait a whole nother week to see what's next. And uh, it's, I'm telling you, it's hard for me not to Google as we're yeah, getting yeah, yeah. closer. It's hard. Uh, and no spoilers in the comments, folks. Don't, 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 uh, Knock us off this ride. We're having a good time. Yeah, I absolutely have no idea if Wrexham are going to get moved up. I have no clue. All right. That's it for this episode. We appreciate you stopping by. And don't forget to come on back. Come on back. If you enjoyed this episode, the YouTube algorithm guarantees you'll enjoy this episode as well. So click on this one right here.